cabinet decisions of the second uh, meeting of cabinet of the year 2023, which was held uh, on Monday 16th, January 2023 at State House and TV. So cabinet, among other things, approved and noted as followed, as follows. Cabinet approved an application by the East African Pipeline Oil uh, uh, of the East African Crude Oil Pipeline Company Limited for a license to construct the East African Crude Oil Pipeline, or which is popularly known as ECO, with the following benefits. One, commitment of both the governments of the Republic of Tanzania and Uganda to develop the ECO project. And two, promoting transparency and sustainability between the countries. And third, demonstrating joint commitment to develop the project in a harmonized manner. The principal engineer from Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development will give you details of uh, this license. Number two, the cabinet sitting on Monday also noted that there will be <coughs> uh, that from 9th to 11th of May 2023, Uganda will host the 10th East African Petroleum Conference and exhibition. And the theme will be East Africa as a high, as a hub, East Africa as a hub for investment in exploration, exploitation of petroleum resources for sustainable energy and social economic development. As you are aware, fellow Ugandans, that Uganda continues to attract both local and foreign investors to be partners in sustainable exploration of our oil and gas deposits. Therefore, through the coffers, the government will showcase the East Africa to the East African community as a hotspot for as a, host, a hotspot for hydrocarbon discoveries. Uganda's hosting of the 10th EPES is coming at the opportune time, especially at this point in time when the country has just achieved the final investment decision for the upstream and East African crude oil pipeline projects and is also concluding the second licensing round and undertaking studies to open up new areas for petroleum exploitation. It is therefore anticipated that the coffers will be very attractive and enormous benefits will be harnessed by the country. This one also, the principal engineer from Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development will go into details of what will take place at the coffers, who is invited, and specific, specific benefits for the country. And the third decision, cabinet approved the Foreign Exchange Amendment Bill 2022 to address emerging issues and significant developments in the currency market and demand from the sector players to promote fintechs and embrace regional and global market developments. Fellow Ugandans, since the enactment of the Foreign Exchange Act 2004, there has been significant developments in the currency market and demands from the currency sector to review the Act. This is because the advent of technological innovation development in the East African community regional legal harmonization criteria and increasing client sophistication resulted in a shift 
in the currency market in uh, resulted in a, a shift in the currency market customers expectations particularly in terms of new innovative operational frameworks which are less costly and convenient know your customer requirements compliance to anti money laundering and compare and uh, combating of terrorism financing and increasing the minimum capital requirements among others the, the no in enforcement of this bill will be done by bank of uganda and decision one is that cabinet approved the, the application for a, a license to construct the east african crude oil pipeline in uganda the east african crude oil pipeline runs for about 1428 22.8 kilometers from Hoima up to Chongliani near the port of Tanzania to be specific the approval relates to 296 kilometers that we are within the Ugandan territory and that uh, runs from Hoima up to the border in Mutukula crossing about 171 villages and 10 districts. And the districts are Hoima, Chikube, Kakumiro, Changwanzi, Mubende, you go to Gomba, Zimbabwe, Luengo, Rakai, and Chotera. So those are the 10 districts. The license that was up, the application that was approved for the award of the license, which the minister is going to issue to the company, is going to be issued to the East African Crude Oil Pipeline Company Limited. This company has shareholding of 62% from Total Energies, 15% from Government of Uganda through the Uganda National Company, 15% Government of the United Republic of Tanzania through the Tanzania Petroleum Development Corporation, abbreviated as TPDC, and 8% from uh, CINOC, or China National Offshore, Oil Company, Uganda Limited. So that is the shareholding of the East African Crude Oil Pipeline Company Limited. Following the approval of this application for issuance of a license to construct the East African Crude Oil Pipeline, that means the company now will legally be <coughs> able to start the development and actual construction of the pipeline. And the pipeline in itself has the pipeline, which is the pipe itself. It has other auxiliary support services, such as the pumping stations, the main valves, and the other components that relate with the pipeline, such as the, the control or the electronic, electrical part of it. Now, the fact that uh, this has been approved, I'll give also an update on the land acquisition. The land acquisition for the pipeline within Uganda is at about, we've compensated close to 68% of the project affected persons. And we expect that uh, in the coming months, we should be able to come to a number close to the 90s. Of course, there are some challenges with the land acquisition, being one, contestation of valuations by the project affected persons which uh, we address case by case. There are issues of estates of the deceased persons, which need letters of administration. This is a very elaborate and long process, but the project at its own cost is supporting these families to acquire these letters of administration so that we have to pay the right persons. So we expect that uh, with all that, we should be able to have the corridor and start cons construction which uh, many people will call actual con construction of seeing the bulldozers and excavation in the later part of this year. The detailed engineering is currently ongoing and it's at about 33% of, uh, of the detailed engineering. That's uh, then the, the procurement. Most of the big procurements have already been uh, awarded by the company itself. That's for line pipe, high voltage cables, the marine terminal, and 
Our colleagues in Tanzania are also progressing and uh, because of the different agreements that we entered into to agree to have a harmonized development like the Honorable Minister mentioned, Government of Tanzania equally approved the same equivalent of a construction license in December 2022 after we, we harmonized under that agreement. So we were able to look at the review of the application together with the East African Council of Ministers decided that shall be hosted by Uganda, having hosted the last one in 2011. So this one will bring, will, the, it's expected that it will attract over 1,000 participants here in Uganda, where we shall be able to, and these will include members of the different states, the East African states, because this is a, a conference organized by the government. So that is where you get first-hand information of what is happening in each state within the East African countries. The conference will attract private sector investors. It will attract academia, civil society, and members of the fourth estate, the media. So it will be a very big opportunity for Uganda, in particular the host, to showcase the developments and the plans we have for developing and exploring. Just like the theme is, we are promoting East Africa as a hub for investment in exploration and exploitation of petroleum resources for sustainable energy and social economic development. It's important to note the part of sustainable energy because now the topic is on transition, but we must understand the transition within the context of each state, and that is what some of the decisions that were agreed at the COP27. So this will be a good opportunity for us to discuss and discuss the development of these resources within the context of the sustainable energy movement and what Uganda is doing and the rest of the East African countries are doing. The conference will help to promote investment in the country, promote national content, for the local enterprises, it's a good opportunity to come and uh, learn of the industry and what opportunities it presents. Uh, and it also helps to the East African countries to move in a harmonized manner, so that if Uganda is developing a crude oil pipeline that is coming from, from uh, the border with Congo, there's probably no need for, unless justifiable, that you should have another pipeline that crosses coming from maybe a, a discovered field in Congo. So those are some of the discussions that this conference has helped to bring on table and discuss at the same time. Lastly, this conference will be an opportunity for Uganda to launch the third licensing round for the exploration in the Albertine Graben. And this will be launched at the conference that will be held from 9th to 11th of May 2023. Cabinet on Monday considered a bill entitled the Foreign Exchange Amendment Bill 2022, and I would like to make a few highlights of what this bill is intended to achieve and what it contains. The main objects of the bill are number one, provide for the enhancement of the minimum capital requirements for operation of uh, uh, forex bureaus and the money remittance companies. Number two, is provide for the use of technology in the operations of the levying of administrative penalties. And number three is provide for strengthening of the vetting requirements for the directors and managers of foreign exchange and money remittance business. And number four is to harmonize the regulatory regime pertaining regulation 
and supervision of financial sector aligned to the East African community undertakings. What are the key proposed amendments? In summary, we propose to amend a section on minimum capital requirements by increasing the capital requirement for forex bureaus from 20 million shillings to 50 million shillings and for money remittance business from 50 million Uganda shillings to 200 million Uganda shillings. And this is intended to strengthen our financial sector in terms of capital buffers. Number two, we have a provision on licensing in terms of providing for the period when the license remains operational. And we are saying that we keep the license in two force until when it is revoked. In the current law, there is a period provided for of 12 months whereby every 12 months a license has got to be renewed. But we are now proposing that the license, as long as it has not been revoked or suspended, it remains operational. There is another provision on the minimum share, number of shareholders. The Companies Act provides that even a single person, me as Henry, can start a company. But for foreign exchange business, we are saying for good governance, we need to provide for a minimum of two shareholders. In other words, we move from the provisions of the Companies Act, where even a single individual can start a company. Here we are saying, because of the governance issues involved, at least we should have two or more people starting a Forex Bureau or a money remittance business. We have another requirement for provision of the security deposit. We are saying, we are proposing that to operate a Forex Bureau, you need a security deposit of 50 million shillings. This has not been there. No, uh, we are saying to operate a, a money remittance business, you need 50 million shillings. And for, for Forex bureaus, you need to have a security deposit of 25 million shillings. Why we think this is important is because when disputes arise, we have cases of complaints, discipline, and also fraud. When they arise, sometimes the regulator has not been having a mechanism of how the compensation can be settled, and we think this will give a very good remedy for that challenge. Basically, these are the major, these are the major amendments we are proposing, and as I conclude, we believe that this, these amendments we have proposed will make the legal framework for foreign exchange fit for purpose, and we believe that the amendments will enhance the regulator's powers 
to enforce compliance and we believe that this will improve the capacity of the licensed foreign exchange bureaus and money remittance business to survive capital depletion due to losses. And lastly, we believe this will eliminate the administrative burden associated with the annual renewal of licenses and reduce the opportunity of regulatory arbitrage and improve related aspects of the legal framework in as far as foreign exchange is concerned. I thank you.